let's have a look at evaluating this sample size. So this is the information we've got about the survey and we are told overall there are 1,740 New Zealanders aged 15 years and over. So that's the first thing we know, is we've got a sample size of 1,740 New Zealanders aged 15 and over. Okay, so let's evaluate that. What do you think about a sample size of 1,700? Personally, that's a lot of information, okay? 1,740 people giving information is quite a lot. This will um, increase the reliability and accuracy of the data and the estimates. Okay, so that's a good thing. Um, so that's one thing. Um, if I go back to this, there is a little more information here that they tell us that there were 1,067 people of European or other ethnicity, 460 Maori, 326 Pacific people, and 124 Asian people. So I can now look at each of those groups separately and evaluate them and that sample size in more detail. So that's what I will now have a look at. So we've got 1,067 European slash other. We have 460 Māori. We have 326 Pacific people. And we have 124 Asian people. Okay, um, so if I think about the largest group, that's quite a large sample size, over a thousand for European other. That's quite good. But if I look at the smaller groups, so Asian, Pacific, Māori, what I need to think about is while it might be proportional for the population, because remember the sample was weighted, that was one of the things that they talked about there, that they the data has been weighted to ensure they're representative, so it's kind of been weighted by that number. These are still quite low numbers, okay, comparatively, okay. Um, so these sample sizes are smaller for each ethnic group. Oh, these sample samples, these sample sizes, there we go, um, are much smaller in each ethnic group. meaning that we have less information about each of these groups. So that's going to lead to us having a um, less, less data, less accuracy, less reliability. Okay. So that's what I want to say. So less data means lower reliability and accuracy. Okay. Then in terms of going into this in more detail, the evaluation in more detail for excellence, one of the things I could look into is thinking about why some of these rates would be lower and what are some of the barriers. So what can I suggest to improve it, okay? So if I think, for example, Asian, there's a lot of different cultures and ethnicities within that. Um, you've got Filipino, Malaysian, Indian, Fijian, um, Indonesian, Nepalese, all sorts of different ethnic groups. So there are going to be some ethnic groups that are very underrepresented and some might be missing completely from that data. So why might they be underrepresented or missing? Partly it could be the numbers in New that live in New Zealand are small. It could be also that there could be some language barriers. 
that because some of these groups of people may have become immigrants more recently for a whole variety of reasons, therefore they may their first language may not be English. And if I've got someone turning up at my door asking me, can I speak, can I answer some questions about a survey, if my English is not very good, I will likely say no, I can't do that. And so they're going to collect less information from those peoples. So an improvement I would recommend would be to make available bilingual or multilingual um, people who are asking the questions to try and increase the response rate in these areas. Okay, And that would apply to all of these ethnic groups, Māori, Pacifica, Asian, um, etc. So that would be an improvement that I would recommend and that's what I want to see for my excellence. Okay, um, If the people asked did not speak fluent English they are more likely to be a non-respondent um, so by having the people collecting the data, so it's the interviewers, being bi or multilingual, this will increase the response rate. Um, for these ethnic groups that may be underrepresented. In the survey. And there we are.